Hi there, Lindsay here. Today we're gonna paint some lovebirds. I thought that would be fun for Valentine's coming up next month and just, you know, bright and colorful and I love bright and colorful. I'm using some very inexpensive paint from Royal and Langnickel and um, I've decided on crimson red, vermilion, gamboge, lemon yellow, phthalo green, yellow ochre, and burnt umber. I also swatched out the rose and the burnt sienna, but I'm not gonna use those two. Um, I'll actually just cross them out right here. Uh, but I really like the colors I was getting here, a very tropical vibe, and I put out just those colors on my palette. I'm going to start off by sketching two lovebirds. I want some nice fat birds on a branch, and I'm just going to start off with an oval, very lightly, just to encompass one of the birds, this bird here on the right, and then I'm going to do another one here to encompass this bird on the left, and I want them kind of leaning into one another, and I want them nice and plump and happy. And then I am going to just put the beak of the bird on the left in really quick. It's kind of like a long um, triangle shape. And I'm going to go ahead and get the eye, which is just a circle. I might have the eye closed just so it's a little sweeter. And then over here we've got, um, let's see, do I want to make that beak a little bit? I think I want to make that beak a little bit higher. And we'll just kind of snuggle them in real close. I'm using a, a pretty dark pencil. I'm going to make my lines a little bit darker as I'm sure of them, just to uh, just so I don't have to do a bunch of erasing because I am working on my good watercolor paper. This is Hannah Mule watercolor paper. It's the um, I believe it's a Cezanne line. Um, and I apologize for any noise of the furnace. It is so cold out today. I just got back walking the dog and it was eight degrees out. Um, so, you know, the furnace is going and I just, I'm on a super tight deadline this month. I've got so much going on in my life, but I really wanted to get a painting done for you guys. Um, I hate to miss my watercolor Wednesday because it's so fun and, and uh, it seems to be what you guys love the most as far as like following along with me. All right, so I want to have this branch um, let's see, I want this, I want kind of like an organic-y branch. I think I'm going to end up putting some little leaves or splotches or something on there. I'm going to get this branch in. Maybe we'll do it a little, a little dropped off branch here. And maybe we'll do another little branch kind of coming off in behind. Maybe little flowers. Keeping it real loose here. Uh, get this eye here. This one can have an open eye. And let's get a wing. We've got just a little dark in there. Now I'm going to put some feet here on the branches. Now with our lovebirds, um, it seems that you've got the shorter toe on the inside, a longer toe on the outside, and the other toe is actually wrapped around the other side. So you're only seeing two little toes. So you can make those kind of like... Um, uh, just kind of like sausages, I guess. And so we've got our short toe on the inside, long toe on the outside. And yeah, I really don't think you need too much um, definition other than that. So sweet. I just love this little snuggliness. Okay, so then what I like to do, these pencils, these mechanical pencils, have a nice soft eraser on them. But if yours doesn't, just get a white eraser. You can even find them at the dollar stores. Um, I just find the white erasers to be gentler on your paper so that you don't end up marring the surface. And I just go around and take out any lines I don't need. Okay, just leaving the basic the basic uh, outlines there. Then I just take a soft brush and I brush away any crumbs. Because if I brush it away with my hands, I will get lotion on the paper because it's winter and the air is dry, so I tend to use a lot of lotion. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is actually, I'm gonna rinse this brush off really, really good so I don't have any eraser crumbs in it. And I'm gonna spatter on some water. The reason I like to do this is that I want this to be a loose style and that's gonna help me get that loose, uh, that loose look. And um, I'm going to go right in with a round brush here. This is a number 12 round Menta brush from Royal and Langnickel. And I'm actually going to move some brushes out of the way. I'm going to scooch my paints out of the way. And I am going to just pull this over a bit so that we can see the mixing area a little bit better. Maybe I'll just throw a 
pink there just so it helps my camera focus okay now I'm gonna take some of the gamboge here now I'm using it fresh from the tube so um, I want to make sure I don't have any glops in there and I'm gonna go and add this under the beak here and on kind of the tummy going up to the head on this lovebird I think they're a type of parrot. I, I've never kept birds before, so I'm not 100% sure. And it's such a pretty color. I don't know if Royal and Langnickel recently reformulated their two paints, but very impressed with how these colors are. I'm adding a little bit of vermilion here. And also, if you just put out a little dollop of each color, you don't have to worry so much about contaminating if you do want to work fresh from the tube. And I'm just going to bring that in there and let it blend in. Now, if it catches any of those splashes that I put in, it's going to pull the paint out and give us that pretty loose look. If that's not what you like, then you don't have to do it. Okay, just make, you know, you want to make sure your work is, you know, how you want it to be. I kind of like the coloring because it almost feels like the birds blush a little bit. Now, I want to have a little bit of that uh, lime green color on the chest. So, what I'm going to do is take some phthalo, uh, some phthalo green. And I decided to use this because I knew it was such a transparent, clean green, and that I could mix it with the yellows to alter it a bit. And that's a one pigment green also, where sap green and hooker's green are mixtures, and they tend to um, they can tend to mix a little muddy if you don't if it's not exactly the color you want. Uh, so that's why I am opting for the phthalo green. And there's no pigment information on these um, on these tubes, but that's typically when you have a phthalo green, it's just PG7 or PG36, and that's all there is. I'm going to mix up a little bit more of that. Also, when you're working with really soft brushes like these, I find that uh, working straight from the tube is really um, really beneficial because you don't have uh, you don't have to work so hard to get the uh, to get the paint. Adding some of that green in the bottom, just letting it blend up. And then I'm going to grab um, a little of the gamboge. I'll just take some of that I've already mixed out. And I'll need a little bit more than that. Wiping off the extra water on my brush. And I'll use that warmer green on the wing. And now I can look and see if there's anything I need to change. I got a back run there that I'm not too thrilled about. So I'm just going to go in there. I'm going to blot up some of that water and just add in a little bit more paint. And I've got some really nice blends there that I'm really happy with. Any place that I feel like is, uh, I don't know, not merging very well, I can fuss with. But as my paper starts to dry, I have to be careful that I don't end up with any hard edges. I'll just go in a little bit more of the yellow, the gamboge. So I'm basically ending up re-wetting this whole area. But that's going to keep me from getting any hard edges. There we go. I turned my space heater off so that um, it wouldn't over, it wouldn't dry my paper so quickly and also um, hopefully it would be a little quieter but since a furnace is going uh, it's really doesn't matter. <laughs> I know you guys say don't worry about it. We don't even notice it, but it bugs me. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna go over to this guy. He's got a little bit more red. And um, generally, I would let an area dry, but I think the way I'm working around, it's not really gonna be that big of a deal. Uh, maybe I will pre-wet some of him though, just so that I can get a better blend. I am gonna leave a little gap where they touch so I don't have um, too much paint seeping between and I'm not going to wet the eye or the beak. I'm going to use that Crimson Lake on the head here. It's a really beautiful transparent red. That was my favorite color as a kid, Crimson Lake. I remember my first set of watercolors. They were the Marie's Chinese colors and that crimson lake was totally my favorite color. 
I still love it. It's just so clean and bright. I never really noticed much of my uh, my paints, my paintings fading either. They were painted with that old paint set from my youth. Now what you can do, as you get around an edge, especially with a bright color like this, you can drag out little feathers and give it a little bit of texture. Isn't that pretty? These brushes come to a really nice point. So even though this is the number 12, I'm still able to get that really nice point there. I'm just kind of letting it feather out because it does get lighter. Now I'm going to take some of that red, just kind of get it off my brush, on my palette, rinse my brush. Then I'm going to grab some lemon yellow so I get kind of a peach color because that's more likely to give me a peach whereas the gamboge will give me more of an orange because the uh, lemon's cooler. Just going to look at it there. I can test it on my swatch paper too just to... Yep, yeah, that's the color I want. I always love those swatch papers. I have a hard time getting rid of them because I think they're so pretty. <laughs> I like to use them as bookmarks or sometimes like I'll just tack them all up on a bulletin board and just look at them because I think they're pretty. Mm -hmm. We're going to bring that up like this. I'm going to move my phone because it's making noises at me. They're just going to have to wait, guys. We've got to get our painting done. Priority, right? Blend those colors in together. I know it looks weird with a big white eye sticking out, but it's going to be fine. Okay, now we're going to just bring that down a little bit. It's real light, so we don't have to worry about it bothering anything else. If we want to put a little bit darker uh, charge in here and there, we can. I could do that with a... Let me just do a little bit darker right there. And this is cotton paper, so it behaves really nicely. Um, you don't have as much back run on a cotton paper. I'm kind of tapping this in to give it the, the look of some layered feathers. And if I do get a little bloom, I think it's just going to give me that feathery look, which is totally what I would want. Now I'm going to grab some lemon, wipe my brush off so I don't have too much water in there. Make sure I don't have any globs. And I want to do just a little bit of a rim of this color on the outskirts of the peach. Not on the wing, just kind of bringing it up around there. And then I'm going to grab some more of the phthalo green and we'll do that with some gamboge. You can do that with yellow ochre, that'd be pretty too. Oh, so many pretty combinations you can add with phthalo green to get gorgeous, gorgeous greens. Now I got a crazy back run going over there. I'm not going to worry about it right now. I'm going to keep working here. Don't let yourself get distracted, you know, just keep doing what you're doing. Don't get freaked out about anything else because everything is fixable. I'm just zigzagging my brush. I don't have a lot of water on my brush, so I can almost get keep some of that texture just by kind of dry brushing over this damp surface. It allows me to keep some of that texture there anyway. Now I'm going to grab that phthalo green, kind of on its own, but without globs, so I'm kind of working it out there. And I'm just going to put that where these guys meet. I'm just going to paint kind of negatively into the other birds, so I get the impression of her feathers, or his, I don't know. I don't know, male or female birds. Usually the male birds are the brighter ones and the female birds are the duller ones. I would have gone a little high with that, actually. I'm just going to kind of bring some of that color out into the body a little bit to um, help kind of cross-pollinate it all. I'll be doing some spattering later. Again, that is optional. You don't have to do it, but I am going to be adding some of that. Okay, I'm also going to do some of the green on the wing, and hopefully I won't get a big back run when I do it over here. Uh, let's start off with some just distinct feathers there. Real dry brush. Now, I'm going to add a little bit of gamboge into the wing color. Just make 
make sure you don't have any water on the ferrule of your brush because that can slide down and that's probably what happened over there. I want some wispy little, even though there really aren't wispy little things on my uh, on these birds. I'm going from a couple different reference photos just to be able to get what I want to get. Oh, I want to get the little tail peeking out from behind the branch. And a uh, little tail over there too. I'm grab a little bit more yellow for her tail. Or his, I have no idea. Or they both could be females or they both could be males. I don't know. Little companion birds. I've never had birds. I don't think it's uh, it's not common up here for people to keep birds. I think it's too cold. I think it's just our temperature fluctuates too much. I don't think, I think it would be hard to keep to keep birds up here. I'm sure they would want like nice fresh air every day and can't open the windows this time of year. All right, so now we're gonna we're gonna come back into this mess, which what well, isn't a mess? We'll fix it, no problem. And what I'm gonna do to fix it actually is I know there's a little separation in color there to there, so I figured if I go back in, do some do some uh, painting on top, it'll force a bloom along that ridge where the feathers change color, and it will be fine in cherry wine here. I need a little, I'm gonna warm that up. I'm gonna use actually a little yellow ochre because that's pretty. Man, those two colors, thalo, green, and yellow ochre are really, really pretty together. They make like a, like a fresh olive color. It's really, really nice. trying to kind of, uh, since I have to go in here, I know I'm gonna get some back runs. I know I'm gonna get some texture. I'm gonna try to use that to my advantage. I'm surprised at how there hasn't been a real big shift in the colors here for a kind of a student school grade paint. That's a very nice, nice surprise. A little more yellow, I think. And that looking a little harsh to me, so I think I might just try to soften that a little bit. And everything I'm doing, I'm kind of trying to put my strokes in, in the direction that the feathers would go. And you could use a scraper to get those feather textures in there if you want to, or the end of your brush. I didn't do it on that one, so I'm not gonna do it there. Um, and I'm actually gonna back into some of those other, actually that works, um, some of those other colors. Oh, man, I'm shedding apparently, or the cat's been over here, because I just squeezed these paints out this morning and there's hair. Uh, I'm gonna blame the cat, because she has been, she's been in here a lot. Wiping my brush off and just sopping up some of the extra paint and spreading it out a little bit. Gonna go back in with a little bit of that peach color, the color that we mixed. Actually, this one's gonna have a little more vermilion in gamboge when I use the uh, use the crimson on the other one because that just had a different tone to it. some more bright colors. Sometimes when you start off uh, really wet, you don't realize, you know, the wetter your paint is, the more you're gonna get a shift. And you might not realize, you know, how much water you've used and how much it's gonna affect how wet it dries. Okay, that looks pretty good. All right. Um, 
I think I'm going to wait a bit to put that, that uh, wing in there, but I do want to spatter on some of the colors that I've used so far. These brushes are really good for spattering because they're very absorbent. But I can switch to a larger brush if I need to. Like if my spatters aren't big enough, I want bigger spatters. So with this number 12 round, that's the size spatter I'm going to get. If I go to this guy here, let's water down some of that phthalo. See, I can just get much bigger spatters with that because it's it's got more bristles, it's holding more paint, and you can just get a lot more done um, with a brush like that. I also want to go in and put the branches in. Notice I'm not doing the beak or the eye yet because it's just too wet. I'm actually probably going to want to erase my pencil marks on the eye because that's where I'm going to want it whiter. Of course, I can go in later with a gel pen, but, uh, but I don't really want to. I'm going to use Burnt Umber. And the interesting about this, uh, this painting, I have no blue in this palette. Isn't that interesting? I usually have like an ultramarine blue, especially to temper my brown, but... Um, but I'm not using it this time. All right, so I'm gonna go in with this brown on its own. I'm not filling everything in with a branch. I want this extremely loose. I'm letting the paint just kind of flow if it wants to flow off. If you wants to go into like one of my spatters and just kind of merge, that is completely fine with me. I want that loose effect. By giving different amounts of pressure on your brush, by holding it way back, that can give you a looser um, effect. If you have a hard time loosening up, try holding your brush way back here, and that's going to just, it's going to make you paint from your shoulder instead of from your wrist, and it's going to give you those more organic lines. Now, I wouldn't do that if I was painting the eyeball or the beak, because you just need more control for that, but if you are doing something like, you know, a, a branch you want to be kind of gnarly, this is perfect for that. You can't, you can't be too fussy because you don't have the control. I didn't tape my paper down because I tore this paper to size. And something that I really like to do when I have a, a torn down paper and I've got four deckle edges is that um, it's really nice to be able to mount that on like colored mat board and then do a mat around it so you reveal some of the colored mat board or colored paper, art paper if you prefer. And um, I just think it's a really pretty way to display and frame it. You can even float it in a frame if you want to. But then you get to that organic, um, that organic edge. I, I really like that look. Of course, you could tape your paper down. Even though we're splashing this and getting it pretty wet, we're, we didn't wet the entire paper at once. So it's really not important that we tape it all down. Um, so if I want to have a little bit of a gray to the branch, and you're like, well, you don't have any blue, how are you going to make gray with, you know, you can't mix blue and, and brown because you don't have any blue, this is what I would do. I would say, what's on my palette? And I would say, what are the opposites? If I take my red and I take my green, that's going to make a gray. So that's what I'm going to mix. I'll mix it right over here. I'll take some of this green. I'm going to mix it right into my red. And look at that. I've got a gray. I might want it a little bit stronger. I'm just going to actually you know what it's not too bad um so whenever you're like look saying oh you need a neutral tone but maybe you didn't squirt it out you don't want to add a color in the 11th hour say where are my opposites what colors would be opposite on the color wheel and take those and that's how you would make your neutral tone okay uh, I think I might want to splatter some of that on there. I think that's kind of cool. I also think while I'm at it, I'll put some spring green little leaves because um, <laughs> they, I don't think these birds like to live in Maine. I think they live in tropical places. So um, I'm with the birds today and I'm going to paint some little springy green uh, leaves here. So I'm just using some yellows and some greens. That color looks pretty good. Let's see how that looks on my... Yeah, let's put a few of those little comma stroke kind of leaves. Oh, that's sweet. Those little buds anywhere you've got a little branch. Give our little lovebirds a little privacy in their nestled 
environment. No, I mean, that would be pretty, even if you had a wet and wet background, I think. Um, I think I might put a little, some little pink flowers or little pink buds while I'm at it. Nothing, um, nothing really distinct, just kind of like, just some little, just some little flowers, some little dabs. I want the birds to be the focus, so all of this stuff is just kind of filler. Filler flowers. Oh, that's sweet. I like that. And I can even go in with some lighter flower, lighter leaves still. Add a little bit of lemon. And that makes smaller dabs because it would be younger leaves. Usually the lighter ones are your smaller ones. Your smaller, springier ones. And I can splatter some of that on too. Okay, at this point, I'm going to let it dry. If you let it dry naturally, you're going to get a, um, I think, a better effect. If you dry it with the heat tool, sometimes it can flatten things. It's usually not that big of a deal, so do whatever you want to do, and then we'll come back and finish it up. Okay, this is dry. I'm going to take a white soft eraser um, to just go in and remove any pencil lines. Make sure your paper is really dry when you do this. Damp paper is very easy to damage. And um, this way I'll know exactly what I need to define with paint. If you want to leave your pencil lines, that's totally fine. I've got no problem with it. Um, but I think with this piece, I, I would prefer it to not have pencil lines in it. If you've painted over the pencil lines, they are going to be difficult to remove. Um, but those ones that are just kind of hanging out on their own, they'll be pretty easy. And I'm not trying to like completely eradicate all of those lines just because I know I have some under my paint and I don't want to... I mean, I want it to be kind of cohesive. And again, I'm just going to brush that off onto, onto my floor. I'll vacuum it later. And there we go. Okay. I honestly find mop watercolor brushes better. Well, it's for blending big things. It can work really well. But mostly brushing off crumbs, really, because they're so gentle. They're such gentle paints. Okay, now we are going to do some details and kind of fill in some areas that we didn't get before. Um, let's go with some smaller brushes because that way we won't bring in more water than we want to. So that's one of the reasons I'll go for a smaller brush. Um, just because those big brushes, they bring a lot of water and if you're not careful, you end up bringing more paint than you want. Um, Control-wise, you definitely can can control a big brush and get fine details, but a lot of times you just don't need so much water. So for their, I'm gonna do their beaks a little differently. This one's gonna be a little bit more pale and this one's gonna be a little bit darker. Um, I'm gonna start by just wetting the beak. It's so clear water. By the way, I have a divided water bucket, so I always clean my brush in the um, dirty side, and then I get fresh water in the clean side. I'm going to start with a little bit of that peach color we mixed at the top. I think they, man, I think Royal Nine might have changed the formulation. These paints are kind of dreamy, and... Um, there wasn't anything wrong with their paints before. They were definitely, you know, worth the money, but they were very inexpensive. Um, they're still quite inexpensive, and but they just seem to be flowing so much better. Or maybe they just work really well on this paper. Very, very pleased. And I just want a little smidgen of green on the bottom. Super small smidgen here. See, I'm kind of like blotting off any extra. I just almost want to trace the edge. That's going to give me a nice contrast. Ooh, I like the way that came out. It's very subtle. In fact, why don't I bring it up to the camera and just kind of show you that? It's so subtle, okay? Sometimes subtle doesn't translate to video very well. <laughs> and then, but we're not going to work on that beak right away because, um, that's wet and they'll bleed together and I do want some sharp contrast but I am going to go over here uh, because that one just kind of, that, that poor wing just like totally um, totally smudged out and I'm just going to mix up a nice kind of spring green color lemon yellow and 
that they low green and I'm just gonna put that back in there maybe that a little few little tuft maybe a little bit less watery paint for that They do want some of that yellow in there. But dry your brush off real good, that way you don't introduce more water. That's the only downside to working from wet from the tube. Sometimes you can't get it quite as dry as you want. You know what I mean? Because like you're gonna have a certain amount of moisture in the paint because it's wet. Versus like when all that water evaporates and you go in with a, just a wet brush, you can a adjust a little bit better. I just love this like little kind of detail. Now it's not on any reference photo I have, but um, but I think it's cute and I'm adding my my style to it. Adding a little cutie patootiness to it. Adding some romance, right? It's almost Valentine's Day. We can add the romance in our painting. I was just thinking, I miss my kids being little and in like the grades where they would trade Valentines with their classmates. That was like always my favorite. I don't know, I think Valentine's is probably my favorite um, holiday to craft for because I just love the colors and um, I, the, I love doing like making favors like uh, party favors or you know those classroom Valentines and stuff like decorating things with candy I just uh, just always love that and um, I miss that the kids are older now and they don't do that in high school. They were in a pretty small town, so they actually did exchange Valentines. Probably a lot longer than than kids do in like, you know, city schools, big city schools. Just kind of sweet, I think, anyway. Um, and let's see, I want a little shading above the feet, so I am just going to just kind of try to get that uh, upper contour of the feet kind of sketched in and then just flick up a little bit of the darker green because I don't want them hovering I want them kind of snuggled in and nestling I want just this really fluffy nestled feeling to these guys and since I'm going over dry these lines are going to stay so I need these little details hope my hand's not completely in the way there I'll bring it back so you can see I just flicked up and I'm using a number four round it's not a super tiny brush but um, I don't, you notice I don't have to keep reloading because it does hold enough paint. If you're more comfortable with a smaller brush, go for it. You just might need to reload more often. That's totally fine. Um, I just want a few little indications of like fluffy, plump feathers. Because you want your birds to be nice and healthy and plump and happy. I'm putting that in there. Fluff, fluff, fluff. And do the same over on the other one. Just kind of uh, figure out where the tops of those toes are gonna be. And then drag up the little feathers from there. This gives you a little shading because their bellies are round. They're gonna be casting a little bit of shadow. The branch might be casting a little shadow or at least just because it's nestled in, there's not so much light getting into that tight space there. So that's why you have a little bit of a darker shadow. Okay. So for the toes, I'm going to use that gray that we mixed. Remember, we did the green and the red. And um, I still have plenty of it left there. Um, and I can add a little bit of the peach into it because it might be a little bit, um, a little too cold. So I'll add a little peach in there. We can add a smidge and a yellow ochre if we need to. Oh, that's going to work out good. Now, sometimes when you get, and this is common, a little more common with student paints or paints that's been sitting for a while, you might squeeze out a little bit of paint and then you get all this like clear liquid that comes out with it. That is your binder. That's like your gum Arabic. So what you want to do is just squeeze out a little bit more and then stir it with a popsicle stick. You can let that dry and reuse it so you're not wasting that paint, but you don't want to just try to paint with just binder or just pigment. You want to like stir them up. Um, that's happened to me with, with uh, pretty much any type of paint. Just squeeze out extra and it's kind of a bummer, but um, it's a real bummer with acrylics because then you don't, can't really save it as easily, but just squeeze it out, stir it up with a popsicle stick or a toothpick and um, and use it. That way you'll get it re remixed. It's happened with 
<laughs> all brands of paint, all different levels, but it can definitely happen with paints that have sat for a little bit or, um, or student grade paints. Uh, okay, this is the number one Zen Round. I'm going to use this for the eye. Uh, to make my black, I am going to take uh, higher concentrations of the red and green. I'm just going to try not to add any water to it. So when I clean my brush, I'm going to dry it off really well on my rag. And look, it's making kind of a black there. It will do the trick. Make sure you don't have any beads of water because you don't want one of those rolling down on your painting. That would be, that would really kind of be a disaster on the eye where you want something detailed. And then I am just very carefully, and I'm even going to rest my hand on the paper so that I don't have shakes. And I am going to get that eyeball in there. Now I'm going to try to reserve, I'm actually going to sketch in my highlights first and paint around them. That way I won't need to Go in with a gel pen later. Now this can be a little tricky because if your paint is really dry, you know, because we're using it pretty thick, it might not want to come off your brush very easily. But you don't want to add too much water because you don't want it to be thinned down. You want this part to be nice and dark. I usually make the highlights a little bit bigger because I know they're going to get smaller as I paint keep painting the eye there we go now I'm gonna water that down a little bit clean my brush off just kind of water it down wipe the beads off my brush again because I can see I've got water on there that's gonna slide down and cause me some grief we don't need grief we have enough grief right we all do we all have enough grief baseline grief in our life over myriad of things I'm sure so we don't need grief in our painting so we're gonna wipe those beads right off of our handle there and I'm just gonna go around and use that gray to outline the eye oh the cute and I can also maybe outline the beak a little bit with this very pale gray and it's not really gray because we made it ourselves so we are not cheating not that there's any cheating in art you do whatever you want to do and you have a good time and that means if that means using black you go for it you use what you want to use don't let me stop you I'm not the queen of the world I'm not the queen of the watercolor there just needs a little bit of detail here and there and now let's also just give it a little slice on that side too now you don't want to outline everything but I really love to bring focus in around the eye um, you know, I'm going to see if I can erase any of that pencil mark there that I don't think much of is going to, yeah, it's not going to erase. And, but the good thing is I'm not lifting up the binder from the, um, I'm not lifting up any of the binder from the paint. So that's really good. Uh, sometimes with student paints, really inexpensive paints like these are, um, you have issues like that. I'm going to give her eyelashes because why not? There's some wildlife artist rolling over in their grave right now. She, can't, she gave them eyelashes? How inauthentic. I'm not even sure these are actually lovebirds. I mean, I think they are. <laughs> Clearly, nobody's coming here for like, uh, uh, really, um, what's the word? Accurate animal bird paintings they're fun though okay now we're gonna also outline our little toesies um, I'm just gonna go with that really watered down it's a watered down um, it's darker than what we painted the toes with it's uh, the color from the eye which is pretty much what we did with the toes except minus the um, beijing it up with the peach and I'm just kind of outlining just to give it a little bit of definition and you can kind of add little lines add little smooshes just to give it a little bit of texture. Now I feel like, yeah, I feel like I should see some claws on here. I'm gonna take a little bit of burnt umber. I'm gonna mix it in with that same color we've been using. I'm gonna take some of the peach. It's a neutral, but it has a color to it. It's kind of a more of a brownish gray, a little bit warmer. Uh, so you wanna use what you've been using. 
And let's see, they're going to follow the contour of the toe. So continue the line of the toe, how it's curling. Just continue that line, okay? Don't stick them out this way. Don't stick them straight down. Just get, the, you know, they have a little bit of a curve to them. Just kind of pretend like they're part of the bone of the toe and that bone is just pushing through. And that's not, obviously, I don't know bird anatomy and I'm pretty sure that's not how it is. I think they're like a fingernail. But, you know, continue the line that you've made with the, um, with the, the toe. And any place you feel like it needs a little more definition, go right ahead and add it. This is really fun. I'm really enjoying this um, potentially inaccurate <laughs> bird painting. <laughs> but uh, oh, it's fun. It's fun, I think, because it's bright. It's like, I that was the thing. It's like, I just want to use some bright color. Everything is so gray and white outside. Well, it was sunny this morning, which was nice. But, you know, everything's pretty white this time of year. Bright and bright and bouncy. All right, now I need to paint the bird's beak here. What I'm going to do is use this little scrubber brush to push back. I know this is a little big. Do I have a small one? I'll try it. This is a little big. I don't know if I can really get in and clean that up at all, but... Yeah, a little bit. Ideally, I like the, actually, like the Menta scrubbers. Do I have a Menta scrubber? I probably do. Uh, well, I know I do. Do I have one where I can reach it? Is the question, isn't it? Uh, oh, yes. This is the one I want. This teeny one that looks like it's the tip is stained pink, so hopefully... It doesn't have color. No, it doesn't. I like, I really like these Menta scrubbers because the Zen scrubbers are a little on the stiff side, honestly, uh, for watercolor, and I'm afraid that it's going to mar my paper. So I'm just going in and I'm pushing back some of that color so I get a nice smooth edge of where I want to paint. And now I am going to, I think I'm going to go with that small brush, the number one, just so I don't get too much color. And I'm going to take my Vermilion. Uh, vermilion on its own, actually. I think that's going to be just about what I want. We'll start with that. We can add a little gamboge in there if we need to. And it, the beaks are a little bit, it's a little bit darker over here. That does look like it might be a tad bright. I just have to spread it out. Hopefully, yeah, that feels dry. My fingers are cold. But after this, I am going to... Go to my exercise class. And then I'll be all warmed up. And let's see. I'm going to extend that out a little bit, maybe. Yeah, I'll extend that out a little bit. And then I'm going to blend it in with a little bit of light, like a kind of watered down gamboge. Ooh, I like that. Very pretty. Oh, I think so, anyway. Now, if that's it, it might be still a little on the dark side, so let's take my um, paper towel and give it a little bit of a blot. And, you know, I kind of like that. I think that's... Well, maybe I'll just kind of... Spread it up a little bit. I do like yellow. I like to get my yellow in there. Okay. Now if you want to put any details on the branches, you can. Um, you know, maybe just to sharpen an edge here and there. I wouldn't get too fussy with it. You can add more spatters if you want to. Now remember, the more detail you add in one spot, a lot of times it means you've got to add more detail in other spots. So I would do it pretty uh, conservatively so that you don't end up having to, you know, repaint the entire thing because you realize that, oh, well, now my detail level of detail doesn't match. Just go in there, highlight a few areas, and I would just call it pretty much done. And, uh, yeah. I'm happy with this. I hope you've enjoyed painting with me today. I've had a lot of fun doing this piece with you. Um, 
And it just goes to show you, you don't have to have the most expensive paints and brushes to be able to create something really, really nice. And I'm really impressed with these paints, actually. I mean, I've used Royal and Nicole paints for years, but I think they've upped their game on their watercolor. Look at the size of these tubes are like 21 milliliters, I think. Holy cow. Um, I will link this stuff down below. This isn't sponsored, um, uh, but there you have it. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up before you go. Until next time, happy crafting.